Hello fellow Jam Kazammers and future Jam Kazammers alike. My name is Tom, also known as Tommy231 on Jam Kazam and elsewhere. I'm here today to show you how I solved a problem with jitter on one of my machines. It has a simple solution, but it took quite a while to find it, and apparently it's a relatively new solution, or at least this problem is uh, previously unknown to the Jam Kazam community, or at least most of it. Anyway, that said, let me show you the problem as it manifests first while you're trying to set up your audio gear. So you go into audio gear, and you select that, and you attempt to set up your audio. You think you have it hardware correct. So it's time to set it up with Jam Kazam. You select the new gear button, and it'll suggest you watch a video but this video won't show you what I'm about to show you, so let's not do that. Uh, it'll automatically check the gear, and once it's done so, it'll allow you to choose your gear, and in my case, it's uh, Behringer USB Audio ASIO driver that I use. It'll immediately test that driver, and it finds the latency to be fine, but I know it's gonna fail what is the rest of the test for reasons I'm about to show you, so let's watch that failure occur. Ah, there it is. You have to make sure at this point that your ASIO settings are correct because this could be a cause for some problems. In my case, my ASIO driver has a default for system performance that's normal and you'll want that to be high speed for this to work correctly. So that said, um, it suggests that I tweak my settings and I can do that and get past the screen but I'm otherwise kind of stuck here. So I tweak the settings and I can drop the frame rate um, from the preferred two and a half milliseconds down to five by using the moderate setting. If I do that, it may or may not pass. Sometimes it passes on this machine and sometimes it fails and it passed in this particular case. So I can move on from here um, and get into what is the real change I need to make. So um, it's allowing me to move on to the next screen. So I do so. And when I do so, it gives me the opportunity to update the configuration, particularly the audio input ports. I switched that in my case from two, from one to two so that it's stereo. And then I select my instrument, if I haven't already, and close the screen and move on to the next one where it allows me to set up the microphone for chat. I use a microphone in my mixer, so I don't need a chat microphone. Most people don't seem to use chat microphones in my experience, but that's another subject. Moving on, I could play this, but it's gonna be a garble audio mess, and that's because of the jitter that I have in this machine. So, close that and move on, and it'll automatically suggest I go into a test session, but if I do that, that test session will be an open session, so people can join you, and I know I'm not ready for that. So I do what I normally do with anything new on Jam Kazam, is I go into a session that's a solo session, so that it's private, and so that I can make my assessment without other people being involved or wanting to join me. So in the sessions tab or uh, tile, I guess you call it, um, you select solo session and that solo session has settings that ensure that you are private and alone. Private test session it says and only RSVP musicians may join. So that's good for me for where I'm at. And there is my red ball. Why do I have that? primarily because of the five millisecond frame size that I selected when I had to use the moderate settings during the original setup. So let's fix that right away. Go into Manage, Audio Settings, Audio Boost Packet Rate Configuration, and there right in the middle of the screen is the five millisecond frame rate, frame rate that caused the red ball. So I switched to the preferred two and a half milliseconds and as soon as I do that, ah, I get a green ball on frame size, but now my jitter's all over the place. But I've changed the settings I wanted to change here, so I'll close this out, and then I'll sit here annoyed with my high input and output jitter. So what do we do about that? Right-click the Windows button, pick Settings, and go into System, Display Notifications, and Power. Go into Power and Sleep, and then there are additional settings available over here. You pick those additional settings. You'll see there are two plans that are selectable. 
I use the balance plan, you can use the high performance plan, and if you haven't changed any of the settings within that plan, it may automatically fix your problem for you by setting the parameter in question to the value that fixes it. As I'll show you here, change plan settings in balanced, changed advanced power settings, and here we go. Scroll down to processor power management and look at the setting called minimum processor state. Hey, mine's set to 5%. So can I fix that? Hmm, can't seem to fix that unless I go up here and say change the settings that are currently unavailable at which point I can change this. So let's get these other screens out of the way and go back to Jam Kazam. So I still have my jitter problem, but notice what happens if I go up and say set this to 50%. All right, so as soon as I apply that, it's hard to see, but I notice that there is a subtle change in the jitter performance. I don't see as many two and three millisecond jitter numbers as I did before. Uh, there's one, but suffice to say, something changed. So let's go up to, say, 75%, and when I do that and apply that, it takes it a second to kick in, and that was one of the confusing parts about this, but it does some amazing things if you just give it that time to catch up, and wow, hey, there's a green ball, and wow, it's kind of staying that way. All right, so that's all good news. And when you read about what this parameter is, it is very safe to set it to 100, and that gives you a little extra headroom. So I usually leave it there. Now, that said, apply that, hit OK, get it out of your way, and enjoy what is now reasonable jitter. And uh, that is basically what I wanted to show you here today. That solution may or may not work for you. I'm sure it's quite hardware dependent, and for that matter, it will probably increase your operating temperature of the machine. However, in my case, it didn't do that. In fact, if you take a look at what we've done here, I have this tool that's called Speed Fan, and I've got it set up to track my temperatures, and it's showing me the temperature over a long period of time, and with the various activities and speed increases that occurred automatically, the temperature did go up and down a little bit during the session, but there is no net change in the average temperature of the machine as a result of making this change, at least for me. Your mileage may vary. Good luck, Jam Kazammers. I hope it works for you.